I knew it! You guys, I knew this all along. I knew this was coming. I totally saw this coming. You ever have it happen where you like totally knew something all along and other people were like, hmm, I'm not sure. I don't know if I quite believe you. And then you were right and you're vindicated because you were the one who was right the whole time. That is what has just happened. Because you know what? I think dog people have an intuition. Maybe it's because I am a queer woman who has squarish glasses and owns a sweater with a turtleneck. Or maybe it's because my dog always gets told on the street that he looks like Scooby-Doo and people stop Chewy and go, oh my god, your dog looks just like Scooby-Doo. And he used to have a blue collar. So then he even looked more like Scooby-Doo but he doesn't wear his blue collar that much anymore because then people are like, oh my god, it's a little miniature Scooby-Doo. The time has come that you appoint me your unquestioned leader. Which is actually kind of cute. That's pretty cute. Chewie's cute, you guys. Maybe it's because I have a Scooby-Doo dog. Maybe it's because of my glasses. Maybe it's because I don't know why. But I always knew that Velma was a lesbian. I was saying from the beginning, Le Velma has lesbian energy. And you guys know, I don't pick up on energy. I've said that in so many videos. I'm like, I don't know what people mean by masculine energy or feminine energy or when people say things like, you know, I could tell this person was gay from birth or what, like how? I think maybe with fictional characters, it's different because you can project things onto fictional characters and make assumptions about them and it won't have any effect on the real world because they're not real people whose lives you're fucking with. But regardless, I knew that Velma was a lesbian. And now it has been officially confirmed that I am right. I am right, Velma is a lesbian, and today we're gonna celebrate by talking about our lesbian queen, Velma. I've got a big lesbian crush on you. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy. Welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business and sometimes cover topics related to the LGBTQ world. This isn't quite about books, but it is about a fictional property and it is about queer women and we love to see the representation. So today we are going to talk about it. I was hoping that by the time I filmed this, I would have a video to react to of someone like Ben Shapiro being upset about it. But for some reason, Ben Shapiro is too busy being upset about other things like- No, I just don't want people twerking with historic instruments. Hello, editing savvy here. Oh, how naive I was when I first filmed this video yesterday. I was like, isn't it amazing how Ben Shapiro isn't even mad? He's got other stuff to talk about, I guess, that's more important. And for once, he maybe is finally leaving the fictional LGBTQ people alone. He'll never stop leaving real LGBTQ people alone, but maybe he'll at least let the fictional ones exist in peace. Nope. If only I had waited, if only I had waited until 1.47 a.m. this morning when Ben Shapiro was up late at night on Twitter, not pleasuring his wife's dry ass P word, but instead tweeting about how he is in fact upset that Velma is a lesbian. So now we gotta address Ben Shapiro's stupid ass. Let's do it. By the way, guys, you know how I keep talking about how I think it would be so fun to have a YouTuber boxing match? Like, I wanna have a YouTuber boxing match with someone so bad. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's because I have curly blonde hair like Jake Paul. I don't know what it is, but... People have said like, oh, it would be cool if Savvy had like a YouTuber boxing match with like Rachel Hollis because that would be like a, a cool peak of squashing the beef through sport. But guys, she's small. She is small and I am not small. I am a bigger, broad-shouldered woman with, with big muscles and I'm fairly tall. But you know who has the exact same height and weight as me? I looked it up. You know who is the exact same size as I am? Ben Shapiro. So guys, let's manifest it. Let's all pretend that manifestation is real and put together our little crunchy mom business guru brains and all manifest together. Savvy and Ben Shapiro, three minutes in the ring. <laughs> I want to make it happen. I think that would be so... Like, people would pay good money for that is what I'm saying, right? Like, I think they would. I would. I'd pay good money to watch myself fight Ben Shapiro. Anyway, let's see what Ben Shapiro has to say about the fact that Velma's a lesbian. All right, so here is the tweet from Mr. Ben Shapiro. It says, more face tattoo phenomenon, TM, here. It's so important, TM, that we make a children's cartoon character openly lesbian. But don't you notice, you bigot. So if you want to know where the face tattoo phenomenon TM thing came from, that is Ben Shapiro's phrase that he started using like last week to mean when someone does something openly for attention, but then acts weird when you draw attention to it. The, the first thing he made a whole thing about this with was Lizzo playing the old crystal flute, which 
I maybe will do a live stream about it at some point because I thought it was really cool. Y'all know I'm a former marching band student. I played the saxophone in marching bands for eight years. I was a band nerd. A lot of my friends are band nerds. And I've always loved that Lizzo has shown so much support to marching bands and band geeks and stuff like that. When I was working in music journalism, I did a story on how Lizzo filmed her Good As Hell music video at Southern University with the Southern University Human Jukebox marching band. And I interviewed their band director to talk about what it was like working with her and things like that. So basically my point is I was very, very excited to see just how much she like brings love, like public love, making it cool to have, to play wind instruments. She just makes the flute cool, right? This like, they're not a band geek anymore. Like if you, if you play the flute, you're cool. Cause Lizzo's cool and she plays the flute. I, I just love seeing that shit, right? And she's also like a classically trained flutist. So anyway, Ben Shapiro was getting mad about that and being like, I call this the face tattoo phenomenon. Obviously Lizzo must have done this for attention. And now she's going to get mad if people bring attention to it. And it's like, first of all, no one got mad about it being brought attention to. Like, the Library of Congress wanted to have her use this flute from the archive to do a big publicity thing because it gets people interested in historical archives, which, by the way, I also used to work in a historical archive. You know what? I think I'll just do a, a whole live stream on the Ben Shapiro versus Lizzo thing because that's a whole thing in itself. But anyway, this is to say that he was also calling that the face tattoo phenomenon. And I don't think that she didn't want people talking about it. I think she did want it to be talked about. I don't think she said anything that was like, oh, how dare you notice? I think she wanted people to notice because she's bringing, she's bringing music education into the, into the public consciousness. It's a good thing, Ben. Education for kids and music is a good thing. You should know this because you and your sister Abby are opera singers. Anyway, let's continue. Ben is now also calling this the face tattoo phenomenon where he's like, don't you notice that the character is a lesbian because you're a bigot, which is like one of the biggest straw mans I've ever seen. It's almost Halloween time and I haven't even seen any scarecrows outside being bigger straw men than this, okay? He's over here talking about how, don't you notice, you bigot? Who has ever made that argument? Who has ever said like, how could you, how dare you notice that Velma's a lesbian? Ben, I don't know if you know this, but people have been noticing that Velma's a lesbian for decades. Like, maybe you didn't notice, but like, all of us noticed. Like, she was, she was very, we were just like, this, this girl's a lesbian. You just, you just know sometimes, okay? I think Ben's only criticism here is not even that he doesn't like that Velma's a lesbian, but more so that he, he thinks it's being done for attention, but that people who are making Scooby-Doo don't want the attention, but they do want the attention. So I'm very confused. Like, what's where does But Don't You Notice You Bigot coming from? Yes, people are pretty open about the fact that they want people to celebrate that Velma is a lesbian. Nobody wants people not to notice. I, I don't know where you're getting that from. Ben Shapiro doesn't make a lot of sense. What's also interesting is with his face tattoo phenomenon is he's acting like that's a negative thing that you want to, that you do things for attention, but that's also his entire business model. He's provocative on purpose to get clicks. He regularly changes his views and he's extremely ideologically inconsistent whether he wants pure free market capitalism or whether he wants things to be regulated in his personal favor completely changes based on what is going to get him the most attention and most clicks to his website at that time. So Ben Shapiro out of everyone has the biggest face tattoo of it all. Right? Because remember wet ass P word? You cannot tell me that this man was singing wet ass P word in good faith. You cannot tell me that when he started reading the lyrics to wet ass P word and going, there's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. You, you cannot tell me that Ben Shapiro was not doing that for attention to get clicks. There is no way he just honestly felt like saying that. Right? Now get your boots and your coat for this wet ass P word. Right? So the face tattoo, it's, it's projection. I don't know anyone who does the face tattoo shit more than Ben Shapiro. But let's take a look at some of the responses. This one I didn't get. So when's the new Scooby-Doo movie with the softcore porn scene from Fred and Daphne since their sexuality is so important in a cartoon about supernatural crime investigators? This is what I, I don't get. There, There's no porn of Velma either. I mean, there is porn of Velma out there. Trust me. Trust me. Everyone I know is in love with Velma. The, it, there's porn of Velma out there, but not in the Scooby-Doo show there isn't. So in Scooby-Doo there is no porn of Velma, so why would there be porn of Fred and Daphne either? I'm very confused. This- I think a lot of people equate the term sexuality to sex. 
And the word sex means different things in different contexts, right? Like, are we talking about sexual dimorphism? Are we talking about sexual chromosomes? Are we talking about sex organs, sexual reproduction versus asexual reproduction? Or are we talking about the act of two people having sex? Are we talking about two people performing sex acts on one another for pleasure or reproduction? Like, what are we talking about when we say sex? So I think because the word sex means a lot of different things in different contexts, a lot of people will see the word sex and they'll be like, oh no, anything with the word sex in it must be talking about doing sexual things when in reality if you were to talk about like sponges reproduce asexually that has the word sex sandwiched in there but that doesn't mean we're talking about porn like you got to use your context clues man people have no reading comprehension anymore i don't know what's going on so there is no sex in scooby-doo i don't know why this person's talking about there being some kind of porn scene of fred and daphne when there isn't any porn scene of velma either Fred and Daphne have been hinted at having a relationship and I believe have even been canonically in a relationship throughout Scooby-Doo. So it's, that's the equivalence of Velma just having a relationship with a woman. Characters having a relationship with one another on screen is very normal. It, see every Disney princess movie where the princess falls in love with the prince at the end. Very normal. And, and that's not to say maybe someone wants all romantic subplots out of things aimed at kids altogether. If so, you gotta start with the Disney movies, okay? Someone says, I don't understand what's wrong with this. I agree, there's nothing wrong with it. Velma, there's literally nothing wrong with it. It's a fictional character having relationships with other fictional characters. Literally has no impact on your life. So this person is correct. There's nothing wrong with it. But this person who replies says, my only issue would be taking an existing character and changing it to be modern instead of creating a new character. So the whole thing with modern, lesbians are not a modern phenomenon. There have been lesbians since the beginning of time. It's just, I, I would check out the subreddit r slash Sappho and her friend if you're not aware of this phenomenon. But throughout history, LGBTQ people have often been historically erased. And because back in the day, it wasn't normal to be out about that. And because back in the day, depending on your culture and where you were from, many marriages were for more practical reasons, such as combining land and then reproducing. A lot of people didn't marry for love. So a lot of times there were people people who had romantic and sexual relationships with people of the same gender and then it would be like these two were lifelong best friends read their letters where they talk about eating each other's p words out they were just best friends <laughs> these two women lived together and chose never to get married to men and they lived together for decades and then they were buried next to each other such a testament to the power of best friendship <laughs> So that's a, a documented phenomenon. Yeah, the lesbians are not modern. Second of all, I don't see how this is changing Velma because, dude, Velma was always, she was always queer. Like, you could just, I, I've been able to tell that from the beginning. Like, I think a lot of people have. And whether or not you saw that, there was never any canonical evidence that Velma was heterosexual. Some people may bring up that she has had a relationship with Shaggy on screen before. So maybe then we can make the argument. Okay, make the argument that you want Velma to be bi then. Make that argument. But making the argument that Velma has to be straight because of that is equally stupid. There's not, I don't see how it's necessarily a change to her. I think it's always weird too when people talk about how making a, like making a character LGBTQ is changing that character. I don't see how it's changing that character because people come out as being part of the LGBTQ demographic at various times in their life. Like, I didn't come out till I was 24. There are people who, there are people who come out when they're teenagers and there are people who will come out when they're adults. But that doesn't change who they are as a person. They're still the same person. They just, you now know more information about them. So Velma being interested in women does not mean that she has changed as a person. I don't see why that makes her a different person. You're not changing the character. Just as much as like, if I, if you found out that I fucked your mom last night, does that change your mom as a person? Should I have to get you a new mom instead of changing an existing character? I don't understand. Yeah, exactly. So Ta Daphne and Fred are allowed to be hetero, but Velma is not allowed to be gay. I mean, I'm on board with it. by Fred and Daphne. Fred and Daphne are, de I think they're both bi. But that's just me personally, okay? But in any case, yeah, that's basically the argument that Ben Shapiro is making here and that other people are making where it's like, Fred and Daphne having a relationship on screen, well, that's fine. But if Velma does it now, it's sexual all of a sudden. That doesn't make any sense. I completely agree with that. I don't know why, what is up with people using the word woke to mean anything that isn't just like 
straight people. If you're not straight, it's automatically woke. There's two sexualities, straight and political. There's two genders, male and political. Right? I don't get why it is that whenever something is not about a straight white man, suddenly it's a political agenda. But if it is about a straight white man, then that's just normal. That's the default. The whole world should be straight white. Like, I don't get it. Because when you're able to have a character, you're able to give that character any qualities whatsoever. So making them straight white man is also a choice. It's not just the automatic default. But I think people like Ben Shapiro, who are straight white men, are used to everything being about them. So they are surprised when something's not for them. It's like, well, this must be a political agenda, because if it's not for me, well, I'm the most normal person in the world. Every I'm the default. Everything centers on me, right? That's kind of how it feels. I don't know. Anyway, I like lesbian Velma. Ben Shapiro, hit me up if you want to have a boxing match sometime. I think it'll be fun. Editing savvy out. Anyway, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe because multiple times a week I put out new videos on this channel. Don't forget to ring the little notification bell to get notified of new stuff. This Friday I have a really big video coming out, so if you like seeing commentary about LGBTQ topics and things like that combined with book reviews, this Friday I will be reviewing What is a Woman by Matt Walsh, the book version. It's a mess, but I will be going through it and reviewing it and interpreting his arguments charitably in good faith and then reviewing where I think things work and don't work and all that kind of stuff, so stay tuned for that. That video is a monster. So that's why today we have a short little happy update instead. I even wore my only turtleneck. This is the only turtleneck I own. I used to not buy turtlenecks because my boobs used to be so big that like turtlenecks would like lower my what looked like my center of gravity and then I would look like I just had like this giant like Saturn ring of titties around me. You guys know what I mean. Anyway, I own one turtleneck and I love this one and I thought I would channel some queer girl turtleneck energy while we talk about the fact that Velma is gay. Here we go. Velma is a officially a lesbian in the new Scooby-Doo film years after James Gunn and more tried to make her explicitly gay. So the fact that I was over here like, yeah, I knew Velma was a lesbian for a long time. Apparently the reason I knew that is that a lot of people were trying to actually portray her that way and it kept not going through. I'm excited to see how many more lesbians are going to be coming to our screens. Just look at her, she's so cute. Velma is officially a lesbian. Clips from the brand new movie Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo which show the Mystery Inc. member googly-eyed and speechless when encountering costume designer Coco Diablo have gone viral on Twitter, confirming suspicions held by the Scooby fan base for decades. So this is the picture, I guess. Velma is, I guess, gonna fall. Is it this girl she's fallen in love with? Or is it a girl over here? I don't know. I haven't seen the movie yet. I don't think it's out yet, but I'm very excited to see this. OMG lesbian Velma finally reads one tweet which has over a hundred thousand likes. It's long been an open secret among fans and Scooby-Doo creatives that Velma is gay. Even James Gunn, who wrote the early live action films, and Tony Cervoni. Tony Cervone? Cervoni? Is his name Tony Cervoni? If so, that's hilarious. Cervone. Tony Cervoni, who served as supervising producer on the Mystery Incorporated series, have confirmed the character's sexuality, but they were never able to make it official on screen. We see this a lot, especially with cartoon properties. You guys remember how at Nickelodeon they wouldn't let Cora and Asami kiss on screen? Guys, I was like 28 years old when I fell for this. Okay, are you, are you ready for me to tell you something theoretically embarrassing if I felt shame, but I can't because Brene Brown thinks I'm a sociopath? Anyway. I was on Reddit reading a thread about like secrets at Nickelodeon and one of the things said here is the footage they cut, here's a link to the footage they had to cut of Korra and Asami kissing. This is what they wouldn't let you show on screen. So I clicked it because I was so excited to see. And it was a fucking Rick roll. I got Rick rolled at 28 years old. I got Rick rolled in the year of our Lord 2020, a decade plus after Rick rolling was even cool anymore. So yeah, I got my ass Rick rolled. But anyway, regardless of Rick Astley or never gonna give you up or anything else, the fact remains that there were shows like Legend of Korra where they had this whole thing where they wanted to have a same gender relationship in the show, and then the network executives were like, mm, that might be controversial. We can make Korra date this bland ass Mako dude who sucks and has nothing to offer, but we can't have her date Asami because that would be just way too gay. We can't have gay. Gay is political. Don't you hate when people try to make demographics political? It's like, this is just a demographic. It's not a political viewpoint. Just being gay is not political. Like, that's so weird. Would you say that getting straight married is political? No, that's stupid. Anyway, I was a Korra and Asami shipper from like the first episode. 
There are people out there saying, Korra and Asami didn't belong together, it was forced in, it was a forced thing they did in the comics just to appeal to the woke moralists that Jordan Peterson hates, whatever. No, in the beginning of that show, Asami popped up on screen and I'm like, that girl is beautiful. And then... I was talking to Tyler and I was talking about how I wanted Cora to end up with Bolin because I liked him and I didn't like Mako. And Tyler was like, mm, I think you'll like who she ends up with instead. And I said, the only way I could like it more is if it's with Asami. And he starts laughing and I was like, no, are you serious? Anyway, Cora saw me for life. So for things like that, yeah, there's things where a lot of times the fans, they can just tell that that's what you're going for, but then the studio doesn't let you do it. So anyway, let's talk about how uh, it's official now. In 2020, Gunn tweeted that he tried to make Velma a lesbian in the live action movies. In 2001, Velma was explicitly gay in my initial script, he wrote, but the studio just kept watering it down and watering it down, becoming ambiguous, then nothing, and then finally having a boyfriend. Oh my god, they were like, no, we're not going to do this. It's like, at the very least, I guess, like, if they give her a boyfriend, maybe you can have Velma be bi. But they were just like, we have to cut out all indications that she's interested in women. That's some bullshit, okay? Dude, I love the 2001 Scooby-Doo. It came out when I was a kid. And, dude, Linda Cardellini, oh my god. She's like, she's like early on gay awakening. Like, oh man, she is beautiful. That is one beautiful woman. Dude, I was obsessed with her in Legally Blonde. I don't want to spoil Legally Blonde. I won't spoil Legally Blonde. Here's the thing you guys got to understand about me as a kid. I was a little gay simp from the beginning. Whenever there were pretty girls and things, I just wanted those pretty girls to succeed even if they were evil, okay? I just wanted pretty girls to succeed if I thought that they were hot. Because that was me as a little kid. When I was in second grade, we watched the movie Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. And keep in mind, I was a child, so it was normal for me as a child to have a crush on other children because I was a little kid at this point. I was like seven, eight years old. We watched Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and I thought Baruka Salt was so pretty. And so I did. I wanted her to win. I didn't want Charlie to win because I, I thought that she, even though she was so mean, I didn't even care that she was mean. I was like, whatever, she's beautiful. She deserves to be mean. My future as a simp was set in stone from my early days, right? Okay, so anyway, my point is I was obsessed with Linda Cardellini in Legally Blonde. I just think she's so beautiful. And if we had gotten her in 2001 as gay Velma, ah, <laughs> life would have never been the same for me. During the 2020 Pride Month, okay, and so then our, our friend Tony was on Instagram, one of the producers, and he said, I've said this before, but Velma in Mystery Incorporated isn't bi, she's gay. We always plan on Velma acting a little off and out of character when she was dating Shaggy because that relationship was wrong for her and she had an unspoken difficulty with the why. There are hints about the why in that episode with the mermaid, and if you follow the entire Marcy arc, it seems as clear as we could make it 10 years ago. I don't think Marcy and Velma had time to act on their feelings during the main timeline, but post-reset, they are a couple. You cannot like it, but this was our intent. Attention. Yes! Yes! Oh my god. I love it. I love it. Oh wait, okay, Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo is out now. Ooh, maybe I'll have to rent that. I am so ready for Lesbian Velma. Dude, by the time this video comes out next week, I will have seen this movie. I haven't watched it yet at the time that I'm filming this, but by this time next week I will have seen it and I will I will be like gushing over it again on my live streams probably. So anyway, we love and support Lesbian Velma. Now all I'm waiting for is like an all grown up Rugrats style version of the Peanuts comics where Marcy and Peppermint and Patty are lesbians too. I think maybe Marcy's bi. She kind of has bi girl energy. And I'm saying this not because I have any understanding of what energy means, but because these are fictional characters and I feel like I can impose whatever I want on them. Because with Velma, my prediction was right. I remember people being like, Velma can't be a lesbian. She dated Shaggy. First of all, as if like bisexual people don't exist. And second of all, producers even confirmed that the relationship with Shaggy didn't work out. So she absolutely can still be a lesbian. Shout out to lesbian Velma. We love and support you. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video just for me to gush excitedly about gay Velma. I will see you guys again for more videos this week. In the meantime, keep on supporting small businesses. Let me know what fun spooky movies you're watching for the fall. Bye! Get you some nuts! There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. <laughs>